let me get this off my chest. I do not like the Joker's redesign from the new Batman adventures. There, I said it. Now I know that's not exactly a hot take because I remember the Joker's redesign was fairly controversial back in the day. There's a reason why his look was changed up again for Batman Beyond and Justice League. Having said that, what I want to do today is to try to analyse the thought process behind the design, essentially playing devil's advocate for the TNBA Joker. The fact that the Joker had three separate designs across the DCAU, eh, maybe three and a half because Justice League Joker is slightly different to the Batman Beyond Joker, indicates to me that the art team on BTAS were never fully satisfied with their Joker design. In fact, if we look back at the very earliest character designs by artist Kevin Nolan, you can see that his original design for the Joker featured those same dark, soulless eyes with white pupils. And I get what he's trying to achieve here. These eyes are inhuman, more menacing, almost like the cold, dead eyes of a shark. Now, if we compare this with Bruce Timm's early Joker sketches, you can see that they're all very different. Note the dimpled chin and he has eyebrows without Betas's trademark shadowing around the eyes. Some of the sketches I found go completely left field, giving the Joker even more exaggerated facial proportions. I'd never seen these sketches before, and I found them on a random Bruce Tim Tumblr blog, so there is a chance they aren't even by him, but for now I'm going to say they are. I can tell those original Kevin Nolan designs never left Bruce Tim's mind, because he repeatedly played around with that image in the Betas comic book work that he did. The earliest example I've been able to find is the cover for the prestige format Batman Mask of the Phantasm comic adaption from early 1994. We can see that one of the Joker's eyes is completely in shadow with a singular piercing white pupil visible. And I agree that right here that looks really menacing. Similarly, there are multiple instances of this in Bruce Timm and Paul Dini's award-winning graphic novel Mad Love, also from 1994. In fact, in the deluxe hardcover edition of Mad Love, it comes complete with colour guides written by Bruce Tim for colourist Rick Taylor, and you can see that he gives a name to this style of eyes. Dot eyes. While they were used sparingly throughout the 64 page comic, these dot eyes are effective at making the Joker look absolutely unhinged. So I can completely see why it was something that Bruce Tim and co wanted to explore. One of the primary purposes of the new Batman Adventures redesigns was to simplify them, making it easier for the various animation studios to be consistent. Just look at the work of Acom and how they butchered the Joker's appearance in episodes like Be a Clown and The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne. The shading around the Joker's eyes in particular was a problematic area for some studios. Even good studios struggled to make the Joker look right. Let's take for instance how the Joker looks in the episode Harley and Ivy. Now the animation was done by Dong Yang, animators of wonderful episodes like His Silicon Soul, Bane and Batgirl Returns. And the layouts were provided by TMS, arguably the best studio to work on BTAS. They were responsible for amazing episodes like Two-Face Part 1, Feet of Clay Part 2 and Read My Lips. But in Harley and Ivy, they just went completely off model. And I'm not saying that their version of the Joker looks bad in this episode, but he just looks pff, wrong. And I can see how that might be a source of frustration for the BTAS team. When BTAS ended and the team started working on Superman the Animated Series, they re-evaluated their art style, opting to be a bit more streamlined and simple. And I would say that they were quite successful on that front. But when Warner Brothers executives felt like it was time to revive Batman, initially there was some reluctance. Bruce Tim elaborated on this a bit in his Modern Masters book. At that point I was really into doing Superman and Batman felt like old news to me. I didn't want to go back and do more episodes of Batman. But we had tweaked our in-house design theories on Superman a bit. Superman was a bit more angular than the original Batman show was and I was pretty pleased with the results. I thought the animation was much more consistent on Superman. So I thought if we took that idea and went even further with it, what would be the results? One night I was doodling and I did a couple of really designy drawings of Batman and the Joker and I went, wow, that's kind of neat. That could get me excited about doing more Batman. So, uh, okay, I begrudgingly accept that the original Joker design needed to be adjusted to ensure that the animation would be more consistent. Fine, I get it. The problem I have with the redesign is that I think they went too far in the other direction and it was too simplistic. If we look at his face, it's essentially just made up of triangles with a sharp chin, pointy hair, an acute grin and a cutting brow. Thematically, I get it and on an intellectual level, I can appreciate it. Most of the other characters are more rectangular, so having this pointy triangular man running around immediately makes him stand out. I just feel like it's a bit too much. 
and his eyes. Again, I get what they're going for. They wanted the Joker's eyes to be cold, dark, and blank with no humanity in them. And yeah, to a certain extent they succeeded, but I feel that it limits how expressive their Joker can be. A great way to compare the two designs in the same situation is to look at the original comic book version of Mad Love which was drawn in the original BTAS style and compare it to the new Batman Adventures adaptation. Let's just pick this scene here, where Harley calls the Joker to let him know that she's about to kill Batman. Look at the two images side by side and the differences are abundantly clear. TNBA Joker's expression, although clearly angry, isn't any way near as expressive as the original design. There are a handful of shots throughout TNBA where I think the Joker's design looks decent, primarily in Joker's Millions. But the real standout, in my opinion, is the Superman the Animated Series 3-parter, World's Finest. These episodes were produced by Japanese studio TMS, who I mentioned earlier were responsible for some of BTAS's best episodes. The difference between World's Finest and the earlier episodes of BTAS is that TMS were responsible for the entire production of the episodes. The storyboards, the layouts, and the final animation itself. Traditionally, the storyboards and the layouts were handled by the Warner Brothers team, but in this case, the workload was shared with TMS. One really interesting fact about these episodes was recently unearthed by YouTuber Steven. TMS outsourced some of the work to animators at Studio Ghibli. If you've not seen it, then you have to watch Steven's video. I'll put a link to it in the description as well as that little pop-up box in the top right corner. Steven outlines how the two studios had an agreement to support each other. TMS helped Ghibli get their film Princess Mononoke over the finish line in exchange for Ghibli helping them out with their own projects at a later date. The two projects that Ghibli helped with were parts 2 and 3 of World's Finest and the TNBA episode Growing Pains, which by the way officially makes Annie a Ghibli princess. I don't make the rules. Having two animation studios of such high caliber working on World's Finest meant that they were able to take the fairly simplistic Joker design and really run wild with it. And it's ironic how this new look Joker was created to ensure that studios would be more consistent. but. He looks his absolute best when the studio adds some flourishes of their own. I won't go as far as saying they've gone off model, but just look at those facial expressions. It's those bulging rounded eyeballs and how comparatively massive his pupils are in the shot. They absolutely took some liberties with the design, but their Joker looks genuinely evil in this episode, completely and utterly insane. There's such a wide array of expressions on display. He just looks great. Other episodes, eh, not so much. The episode Joker's Millions perfectly demonstrates why the black pinpoint eyes were essential. There's a scene where one of the Joker's henchmen is sent to the Iceberg Lounge dressed as the Joker to provide him with an alibi while he robs a security van. We can immediately tell that it isn't the Joker because his eyes are normal. And I have to say the pointy angular face just doesn't work as well with the white eyes. I'm increasingly coming of the opinion that for this design, the black eyes are essential, otherwise the whole thing just sort of falls apart. This is also illustrated by fan efforts to recolor the Joker's eyes, a noble mission that I don't want to disparage, but I just don't think it works. These fan-made videos are interesting though, and I appreciate the efforts they've gone to in order to highlight how different the show could have been. I don't think it's controversial to say that the TNBA Joker design had issues, but I view it as an essential stepping stone to the final Joker design, as seen in Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, and Justice League. This Joker seems like an amalgamation of the first two designs. The shading around his eyes is back, but instead of black eyes with white pupils, we get yellow eyes with red pupils. The Joker's face retains some of the more triangular elements, such as the chin and his ears, which sets him apart from the other characters in the universe, but he's more detailed, which allows him to be more expressive. And of course, he's got his lips back. It really is the best of both worlds, and I think it's fantastic. But at the end of the day, my go-to Joker will always be the original design, especially the way he appears in Batman Mask of the Phantasm. To me, that is THE Joker, and it won't ever get better than that.